Liberia, West Africa. One of the most brutal wars this region had seen ended just five years ago. Hundreds of thousands of people suffered. Men, women, the old and the young. Killed, maimed, traumatized. But there were also great survivors molded from this crisis and new leaders were born. This week on African Voices, Liberian youth activist Kimi Weeks. Going through the war and having that experience firsthand of nearly dying essentially made me a stronger person. With the end of the war, Kimi Weeks went about the business of following his calling to save Liberia's children. And his activism goes beyond Liberia's traumatized young. Women suffered horrendously. It's one of those most unfortunate facts of uh, reality that in a country that's experienced so much war, rape is still one of the biggest issues. Kimi Weeks is now establishing women's empowerment organizations. You made so much sacrifice to be here today. I see a lot more smiling faces. I remember the first time I came, there were angry faces. <laughs> Projects began by his Youth Action International have been empowering former child soldiers in Sierra Leone, Uganda, and Liberia, and educating war survivors in literacy and how to run their own businesses. If uh, Kimi Weeks is now available to be a part of a team that's moving the country forward we will welcome him with open arms because he he has done well for the country he's done well for the youth of the world and we recognize that yeah. when we when we made him uh, our orator uh, he was the first youthful orator at our independence day celebration two years ago and he's been working uh, opening some centers that has been helping some of our young women empowering them to be able to acquire the skills and be able to have income generation activities. So he's one of the young people that we certainly applaud. I didn't expect this my first time in Liberia. What's going on here? Well, most people don't expect it because when they think about Liberia, they think about war, bloodshed, cannibalism, all that kind of stuff. But in truth, the country has immense beauty. I mean, it's going to be a tourist hotspot soon. I mean, you look in the distance and you already see people surfing and we've only been three years with the new government imagine what will happen five ten years down the road coming up we talk to Kimi Weeks about the uneasy alliance between development and aid can Liberia survive without handouts it's been what five years since the war ended yep what what do you see well I see tremendous hope um, I see hope everywhere, um, lots of potential, um, and I think that anybody who really looks at Liberia and looks at it hard can see that as well. If you talk to, you know, there's lots of issues. There's issues with unemployment, there's issues with uh, youth who are angry, there's issues with youth who didn't get counseling, um, there's still issue with uh, corruption, etc. But beyond all that, those are marginal uh, uh, compared to the amount of hope that I think exists for Liberia and the potential that exists for Liberia. To really change Liberian women's life, you have to do a program that combines everything. And the people that you're helping, do you give them money or do you give them a means to? Well, we, it's both. Uh, with all of our programs, what we've done is we've gone into the communities, we've talked to the people, we've found out what they need uh, to be successful. And then from that, we've developed the program. So the women who come into the Women's Center, for example, they do the training, they get trained, they get life skills. And then as they graduate, they get a micro loan to start up their businesses. So they're not just going with knowledge, but they're also going with the tools to start up. And I think that's what's essential. Despite his education at two of America's best colleges, Weeks is humbled by what he learns on the streets of Monrovia. It's amazing what you learn from people when I forget about my Western education that I have, an Ivy League education, and say, I'm just going to listen to you as my friend. 
because those people understand their reality better than any big international organization or anybody holding a PhD from Princeton or Harvard. But the big organizations are still here, and Liberia is still a country on life support. The UN Security Council just renewed the peacekeeping mission, and there are several hundred civilian workers here. Kimi Weeks says it's time to wean Liberians off a dependency culture. I remember when the war first ended uh, for many, many years. I mean, immediately after the war, we started to get relief rations. We were happy because we didn't have food. But that started to drag on for months, then years. And all Liberians started to say, listen, we don't want to be receiving food handouts. Gave us the tools to go plant food. Gave us the opportunity to, to feed ourselves. And that's why I think what's best for Liberia is the kind of aid that involves investments. Um, that involves supporting infrastructure, that provides jobs and training uh, opportunities. So rather than someone saying we're bringing a thousand bags of rice, bringing a thousand uh, uh, bags of seeds, let people grow food, bring in training opportunities. That, that's what has to happen. Don't go back home and just sit down. You all think about being in power. You all think about changing your lives. This is your chance to prove it to us. You might drive through the streets and see hundreds of humanitarian organization cars. That doesn't necessarily mean that those, that money is getting to the people, and it doesn't mean it's getting to the right people at the right time using the right uh, strategy. Um, so that presence can fool you. When you look at the amount of money that's come into Liberia for international relief work, it's astounding. Um, that can fool you as well, but a lot of that money unfortunately goes to paying high salaries. Five years of civil war not only wrecked the country, it deprived a generation of children of education and ruined the economy. Jobs are still scarce. The challenges of getting Liberia to stand on its own feet again are enormous. Even if there is an enthusiasm for Liberian girls and women to join the police force, there's quite a lot of them who, who lack the basic skills to, you know, to read and write, which is an essential part of being able to maintain the law. It is, and, and I think, unfortunately, this is another result of the war. If you think about it, if someone was 10 years old in 1990, uh, in 2004, when the war ended, they're going to be 24, that means that person has not had the opportunity to go to regular school for 14 years. So it's not because the Liberian people didn't want to go to school. It's not because we have a nation of people who don't want to read and write. That tells you that we are serious about education and we're serious about moving forward. <laughs> Kimi Weeks is part of the campaign to get the youth of Liberia mobilized. Despite fears about corruption and a lack of infrastructure, Weeks says it's time for Liberians to take the lead in distributing aid and getting people back to work. I think if it's done by, again, the Liberian people, the Liberian government, uh, through a process where people care because it's our own people, I think the results will be much better. But on the very heels of that has to be employment. Because you could do all the rehabilitation with the best psychiatrists, with the best counselors, unless you can give meaningful employment to the young people, nothing's changed. We tried to find the money, and it was not easy. But when the sun came up, we were looking for the money for Basra. When the sun went down, we were looking for the money. And thanks to God, we finally have the money to start a 100-acre farm right here in Grand Basra. Africans are vibrant people. We're able to rebound from the worst things possible. I remember during the war, it would be a day after ceasefire, and people would be back in the markets fixing their lives again. You won't see people mopping around, uh, there's no hope. The markets would be open, the clubs would be open, churches would be open, right after, a day after the war. We're vibrant people. As for Kimi Weeks and his part in Liberia's renaissance, he has a well-known role model. Oh, Kimi Weeks, I think uh, maybe he will be the Obama of Liberia. Well, I'd like to, I, I'd like to compare myself at some times as I, as I watch uh, President Obama. Uh, that, that's, a, that, that's where I want to be, uh, not as the U.S. president, but in terms of that kind of presence and that ability to motivate people, because that's what Liberia and Liberians need, uh, a person or a group of people who are able to motivate the entire nation and make people feel 
warm and fuzzy, essentially, but also gave people that sense of wanting to get out there and give it 110%, that we can't just sit back, but you've got to get out. And that's what I hope I'll be able to do. Liberians are singing again. They live in one of the world's poorest countries, and the specter of war hangs over them. But peace is taking hold, and Kimi Weeks sees hope and optimism where once there was neither.